He's all I need this morning. Is he all you need this morning? He's all we need this morning. When we give God praise for our lives, that he has blessed us and uh I need him every single day of my life. Yes. Need him more and more. Yes. Oh, man, Flavin Paul said he had not attained that level where he did not need more and more of the Lord Jesus. Yes. And every day we need more of him. I need more grace. I need more mercy. I need more patience. I need more love. Hey, Amen. I guess I'm the only one. <laughs> Yeah, I need the Lord in a, good, in a bad way to do some good things. I need the Lord to help me do some good things. Yeah. Is that else in here? The Lord want to use you to do good things. And he want to help you do good things. I don't care how dirty you think you are. The Lord wants to do something good things through you. Eyes have not seen, neither have the ears heard, neither has he entered into the heart of man the things that the Lord has in store for them. I'm just trying to tell you, God wants to do some good things through you. Hallelujah. I know he'll do some good things for you, but have you thought about him doing something through you? Huh? Have you thought about him doing something through you? Where your hand, I know you say, Reverend, I, I just can't imagine. I just can't imagine. I want you to imagine it. I want you to think about it. I want you to even let, let yourself dream about it. I want you to write it down sometime. I just, it might sound crazy. I just want you to think of something. You say, Reverend, I've been too bad for the Lord to use me. I want you to know that the blood of Jesus can wash away all sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And his healing touch can make you whole. And when he makes you whole, he will use you for his glory. Let him do something in you. Let him do something for you. And my God, let him do something through you. God wants to do good things through you. And don't forget that. That's a word of exhortation this morning. God wants to do good things through you. You. And tag that scripture. Eyes have not seen. Go look it up in your concordance, back of your Bible. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. The things that God already has in store. He's already planned them. Jeremiah 33 and 11 says, for our, uh, no, 11, 33, which is it? Jeremiah 33. 29 and 11. For I know the plans or the thoughts that I have towards you, saith the Lord. Uh, not a good thoughts of uh, of peace and and not of evil, and has an expected end. God's already planned good things for you and I. It's just us we have to get into the flow of God. There are signals that are above our head that we cannot see. You could not see the internet signal that was not as strong as it should be this morning. You couldn't see it in the house. It is not connected to the back. It is what we call a wireless signal. You can't see it. I, I don't quite know where it is and which direction it's flowing from, but it is here. It's flowing, and information is traveling back and forth. It's the same way with spiritual things. God, God has things that you and I have not seen, things that are invisible. I know it don't get spooky, but that you can't see what God is doing. You can't see the angels. You can't see how the Spirit of God is working and how God is maneuvering. You can't see that, but you need to know that there is a frequency that God wants us sometimes to just tap into to say, God, show me what you're doing sometimes. God, reveal to me what you want to do in me, what you want to do through me. And when he does that, church, it, it lifts up your mind to realize, you know what, it is possible. Yeah. God can do anything yeah. in me and through me for his glory. Yeah, and that's the most important thing you can think of. Right. As a child of God, that God wants to use you. Yeah. Yeah. I said it Thursday night and Wednesday night in our Bible study that part of the issue of why Christians do not grow is because we're not working for the Lord. You begin to grow when you start moving and doing for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When you start being a witness, when you start uh, practicing um, fruits of the Spirit, I was—I think it might have been Bruce Almighty that 
movie I saw, Bruce Almighty, with uh, Jim Carrey in it, and Morgan Freeman. And Morgan Freeman said something, I know it wasn't original, but it was profound when he said it. He was playing the role of God, and, and he was talking to Bruce, and he said to him, you know, people pray for patience, and he says, and they're, they're, they're wanting them to, God to give them patience, but what he does, he says, he creates situations where you have to exercise patience. God knows that, listen, in order for us to grow, he's not just going to dump it on you. He teaches us, he gives us gifts as we talked about, but then he has opportunities for you to exercise what's already inside of you. Those gifts that God gives us, they are full blown by the power of the Holy Spirit. The only issue with them is God has to use us who sometimes don't walk in the Spirit. Right. Amen. 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 Reverend, that was good. That was good, Reverend. <laughs> yeah. He's, he, what happens is we're not able to use, uh, oh no, God's not able to use us to our fullest potential because, church, sometimes we're not walking in His way or we're not familiar with all His gifts or we're not we're not practicing what He's put inside of us. So, so we miss it sometimes. Yes. Sometimes when God wants to use us, you know, the urge you feel, you know, the, the idea that comes to your mind and you say, no, that's, that's the devil telling me to give her that money. I'm not going to do that. No, no. sometimes we miss those opportunities because we're not familiar how, with how God is trying to use us with whom, in the way that we are. Can you say amen? amen. So it's important for Christians to exercise your gifts. You say, Reverend, I've got to be real holy for God to use me. Man, uh, let me put it like this. You said, Reverend, I need to be worthy. I said, man, that's a, that's a good, yeah, I'm with you. But none of us are truly worthy. Bottom shelf here. None of us are truly worthy. Because what is it that you have that God truly needs? What is it that you and I have that God can't do without I know, I know, I know. You think much of yourself. I do too. I think a lot of myself sometimes. But the truth of the reality is, listen, God can do what he needs to do without you, Amen. without me. He would love to use us, but he can do, hey, listen, his will will be done. Amen. His will will be done. Amen. Now, the, the issue is, he says, I want to use you to do my will. I'm going to use people who will open up themselves to me, but I want to use you if you'll let me do your will. And so God wants us to allow him to work in our lives. Give you a couple of things on this screen, and I'm going to get out of your way this morning. So we're talking about spiritual gifts. Quick review. Hit me real quick. We're going to look at today 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 through 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 through 6. It says this, Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but in the same God who empowers them all in every one. He lets us know quickly that there are different kinds of gifts that God gives us. He lets us know that God is, he's the one behind them all, church. Amen. He's the one moving these things forward. Listen, because God has an agenda. I said, God has an agenda. Yes. Yes. God has an agenda, and he wants us to get on board with his agenda so that he can use us for your, his glory. God has designed his church body to walk in unity. And this scripture helps us to see, is going to help us to see that we're going to look at unity and diversity. Unity and diversity. God wants to use us in a way of unity and diversity. The church, uh, in, in throughout the Bible, Paul, in mainly three letters, 1 Corinthians, Romans, and Ephesians, he spends time talking about the gifts of the Spirit. But he also talks about the body, which is the church. You and I, if you want to use a natural body, if you will, you and I are this symbol of the body of Christ. In the body of Christ, there are many members who have joined the body. Mm -hmm. So if we use my body, one part of the body of Christ are hands, another part are feet, another part are legs, another part is the, is the head, another part, there's all kind of parts to the body of Christ. There's no individual Christians that are all the same. Amen. That's what makes the body of Christ so diverse is that we're all different with different gifts from different backgrounds, 
heading to different places, but yet God pulls us all together in this thing called the body of Christ. Yeah, Amen. And Paul talks about this in three different letters where he deals with unity and diversity. In order for God to use the diverse gifts he's given, there's got to be unity among his people. Yes. Right. Otherwise, those who have gifts get jealous with those who have gifts. Yeah. Those who have gifts and are using them get jealous, or, or, or those who don't, who are not using their gifts, get jealous at those who are using their gifts and are prospering at their gifts. Paul tries to help the people to realize there are so many gifts here, but the issue of this diversity is that there must be unity. We yes. must have unity. And today we're going to talk about and focus on God's unity in diversity. That God is pleased when you and I accept all of God's gifts in his house, in his church, in his body. When you and I respect the gift of God in your brother and in your sister. We may not all believe the same. We may not have all the same, um, when it comes to Christianity, all this, the, the same undertones uh, in some of our belief, like some believe it's more important to speak in tongues, and some believe you don't need to speak in tongues. Hey, but watch this. That is not a core issue. That is not a core issue. Christ Jesus died on the cross is the core issue. And you believe he died on the cross and rose from the dead for you. That is a core issue in which we, in which we believe. Amen. Whether or not some people believe that you know you don't need to lay hands. That's that died out in the old in the New Testament when the apostles died. You don't need to lay hands on people, you know. And some believe, you know, let's bring me the oil, bring me the olive oil, the Crisco, the, the vegetable oil, bring me the oil. We're gonna lay hands on you with the oil. Some people believe that this that is still not a core issue. Things that, different denominations, you see these things, they're fighting about, that. Then it's not core issues. It's when we have a problem. When we say Jesus is not the only way, Amen. that's when we, we got a core issue. Amen. And so what God wants us to do is to accept and respect those in the body because each part of the body is different. Amen. There's diversity in the body. Well, what is unity then, Reverend? Well, let me tell you what is not. Unity is not... Um, Co cooperation. Unity doesn't mean that there's cooperation. You can cooperate with someone's request or demand or idea, but doesn't mean that you are unified. Mm -hmm. I do that all the time at work. You do too. Yeah. <laughs> you just do it because, you know, yeah, I don't agree with you at all. Not for you. I just need to get this paycheck without any hesitations from the, from the, uh, from the company. But that doesn't mean I'm, because I'm cooperating, we are unified. Unity is not conformity. You can go with the flow or act the way others are behaving, but it doesn't mean you have unity. Amen. Unity. Unity is not, listen to this, is not like a confederation. It's not like a group of people that have joined together for a cause or they're standing for a common cause. Because, listen, even in that, not everybody uh, has the same ideals that you have in a, in a group of people. Even if you're fighting for the same cause, some believe, hey, hey, yeah, I believe in this, but we shouldn't do that to obtain this. And now the country is in, in an uproar about removing statues and things of that nature. Listen, don't, don't, don't bandwagon, church folk. Don't bandwagon. Let me tell you why. Because statues, removing statues, don't remove hate. I'm just going to tell you in case you was. You can take it down, you can mail it, you can burn it to the ground, but if it's in the heart, it's in the heart. And you got to learn to deal with it. That's nothing we need to even deal with and argue about. People are going to hate. The poor you have with you always, haters you have with you always. Amen. You just have to learn to deal with those things. Amen. But God teaches us how we can stand strong for him. So he, he wants us to understand that, listen, unity, biblical unity is from the Holy Spirit. And that's what that text was referring to. Now that there's varieties of gift, but it's the same Spirit. It's the same Lord. It is God. Who is the one that is working in, the, in this diversity? Unity comes, true unity comes from the Spirit of God being in our lives. When you have the Spirit of God in your life, you become a Christian and you're, you're letting the Spirit of God control you. He is all about peace. Yes. He brings peace. He promotes peace. He brings unity with people because how else can we win the loss unless we become unified in Jesus? Amen. Ephesians chapter 4 and 3 says, Make every effort to keep the, yourselves unified in the spirit, he says, 
binding yourselves together with peace. So it's important that he wants us to understand that we must walk in unity uh, in order for these gifts, these di this diverse of gifts to be used among us. So the question remains, so how can we see unity in diversity? How can we see unity in diversity? Here's my first point. Number one is that you and I must realize God equips us with different gifts. You say, Reverend, you're being repetitive. I need to. I want to teach you this. I want you to understand that God equips everybody with different gifts. God wants to use you in who you are. And in verse 4, he says, now, now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. He equips all of us with gifts. And every gift is different. In 1 Corinthians, he talked about how the body. He said in 1 Corinthians 12, verse uh, 27, 31, he says, Now you are the body of Christ and individual members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. Are all prophets, are all apostles, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all possess gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire higher gifts. What's the answer to all those questions? No. Everybody does not speak in tongues. I could I can show you prominent ministers who have who have, who have said, I have they have prayed for the gift of tongues with all their heart. And it's not a gift that the Spirit of God gave to them. They prayed for it, but that was not the one the Lord wanted. They earnestly desired it, but that was not what God wanted them to have. They were open to everything God wants to do in their life. But listen, God doesn't want us to do everything. The Bible says Paul was going down, and he was uh, heading to one place, and the Spirit of the Lord stopped him from going there. He was going to minister the gospel, but the Spirit, he says, forbade me. He pushed against me, would not let me go do a good thing. Because God is, God knows what he wants us to do in our own lives. Everybody cannot do the same thing. Yeah. Everyone has a different gift. And not only is it a different gift, but everybody has a different measure of the gift. Yeah. Okay, so in the Bible it talks about leadership. That there's a leadership gift. That God uses a particular gift called leadership for his glory. A person is able to discern what to do and how to lead people. Just, just quick, really to do it, bring about his glory. But God gives that, give that gift in different measures. Some people have a gift of leadership and they could lead a thousand people. Some have a gift of leadership and they can only handle 50 people. You say, well, the thousand guy, he's better. No, it just means God knows your capacity. God knows how much I can handle. God knows how much we can deal with. Let me roll down your street. Some, some, of, us, some of us are able to have, able to handle millions of dollars. Hey man, I got some amens on that one. Talk about the right thing in church. Some of us are able to handle millions of dollars. It doesn't trip us up. We were able to, we would, God would put it in our hands and we would put it where it needed to be. We would do with the right thing. We would blase, blase to the kingdom of God, grow it, blah, blah, blah. But God also knows there's some of us. You can't handle $300. <laughs> Amen. 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 He knows we can't handle three hundred dollars. He knows if he put three hundred dollars in our hands, you could have, you could have, you could have a bill that's due that's two hundred dollars, and you won't pay it because you saw something that cost one hundred and seventy-five dollars, and you saw the one seventy-five before you saw the bill, and you was like, "Well, I can make the bill up later." I'm just going to use 175 to buy this thing, and then I can get the rest a little later. And what you end up doing is doing neither. <laughs> you spend up that money, and you don't have it to give to pay that bill, and you don't ever get it, get it back to, to make a, it. Just, it's just, and God knows, you know, I know, we know, you just can't handle that much money. Well, God has gifted all of us differently. And some of us, I want to settle this right now. I know what some of those prosperity preachers told you, but some of us would never be rich. Oh. <laughs> keep, keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Some of us won't though. Just be just need to be real about that. 
Some people chase money and ruin their life trying to get rich, and it was never in the design. God was never in God's plan in this design, because he knew, he knew our hearts. Some of us, our hearts are where your heart is, is where your treasure is. And God knew sometimes some of us would love the chase of money more than the chase of God. He knows that some of us, some things would get us off of the track, and he says, you know, that was ne that's, not, that's not my design for you. I don't, you can't handle it. But for some people, there's nothing wrong with those. Again, it, it doesn't matter. If God only gives you enough money to pay your bills, take to the glory of God. Don't be ashamed of that. If all you can handle is your 9 to 5 job and you'll work it to the day you die, there's nothing wrong with that. I get discouraged when I hear, listen, I have my wife and I, and I put her in this, I'm putting her in this heavy. My wife and I have tried about, I don't know how many internet businesses we could find, trying to make some extra money on the side. And you end up spending more money, trying to make money. I've been there. You can't tell right now. You couldn't tell me nothing. You couldn't tell me anything because all of it, it it's it's they know a little bit more. They knew, but they don't always tell you. And it's so difficult. It's hard. It's, it, I'm not want quick money. I just just show me a dollar. Help me make a dollar, <laughs> and you might get a convert out of me. But it's hard. Everybody, I'm I'm, I'm getting out of this, but listen. Everybody, I want you to know this. Everybody is after your money. Mm -hmm. And I'm moving on. Everybody is after your money. And, and I want to tell you this. Learn to invest and protect your own money. And by the end of your life, many of us, they said a working lifetime, you will earn at least a, 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 a million dollars and a half. You'll earn at least a million dollars and a half if you make at least, I think it was $11 based on those numbers. If you make just $11 a day, eight hours a day, $11 a, uh, an hour, eight hours a day, by the end of your working years, you would at least have accumulated one million and, and maybe a half, $1.5 million. Listen, everybody around you is after your money. Yeah. They want some of that million. By the time you die, I want you to know that everybody wants a piece of your money. Because if they can get their hands on their money, it profits their cause. When you and I are slack and lazy, don't do what we're supposed to do, what we're supposed to do, what we do, we end up allowing burdens to be put on our shoulders. We can't serve God with freedom. We have to work for the man. I mean, work for people all the time. God, God wants us to make sure we do our part to stay in our gifting, spend our money wisely, save it, work, do diligent work. God will bless you. Is anybody a witness that God will bless you? If you do the right thing, just do the right thing. Do what we can with our finances. I don't know how y'all got me on the money. I got to move on. I got to move on. So listen, so every gift is different, and God gives that gift at a different level. So if you can sing well, praise the Lord. I can't sing well, but I can do enough. Listen, I'm still a praise and worship leader, even though I don't sound as good as Sister Belinda or Sister Leisha or Karen, any of them. I, I can't sing like they do. I, they'll never ask me for a record deal. But <laughs> I'm going to do it all for the glory of God. Amen. All right, number two. Point number two. Quickly, we've got to go. All right, here's number two. But God expects us to use the gifts in different ministries. Verse five, he says, and there are varieties of services. That word services means ministries. But the same Lord. There are a variety of different ways of, of serving the Lord, but it's we're serving the same Lord. God uses these things in different ways. He uses the gift He's given us in different ways. Brother Darren and his group, they, they sing to the glory of God. That's a ministry of itself. God uses different gifts in different ways. And so he, he helps us to see that. He says to us in Romans chapter 12, verse 6, he says, having gifts that differ... According to the grace that's given to us, let us use them. God wants us to use what he's given us. He wants us to begin to look in our lives and, and to fight against this culture that asks this question, what can you do for me? That's what the culture is asking right now. A song says, what have you done for me lately? That's the culture's right now. What can you do for me? What am I going to get out of this? What can you do for me? And that's legitimate to a certain degree. But when life is lived in that kind of pursuit, what can you do for me? It creates a culture that is absolutely selfish and narcissistic. Mm -hmm. a, 
a culture that believes they're entitled to something, a culture that believes they should get it no matter what it, it takes, who, who they hurt, who they step on, whose feelings they, they disregard, it, it doesn't matter. It creates this culture, I, it's all about pleasing me and I'm going to do whatever it takes to please me. When you're serving with your gift in ministry, that fights against that spirit 100% of the time. If you're walking in the spirit and you're desiring the Lord to use you in ministry, what that does, that says, I am willing to serve, not to be served. That is saying, I'm willing to give of my time and give of myself, even if people don't pat me on the back, even if I don't get paid for it. I didn't get one. Amen. Amen. No, it's too late. Man. It's, it's, it's too late. Man. It's too late. That was over. It didn't go way over. It did. It took us by surprise. Think about it. Y'all do it all the time. Brother Darren, Brother Earl, Brother Frank, mm -hmm. they come turn the church lights on before time. They burn their gas. They come over here. They don't get paid for that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's serving. That's part of ministry. Uh, Sister Alicia, she helps create these slides for the for the view for all of us to sit back and enjoy. She don't get paid for that. It, you know, the worship leaders they come up here and worship. They practice. They they give up themselves and their time. And they don't get paid for that. That's part of ministry. When we go volunteer different places, there's the word right there, volunteer. It's you giving of yourself. You saying, I want to do this. I'm willing to, watch this, not be served, but to serve. serve. That's what that's about. He's saying, listen, here's how unity works. All our gifts are different, okay? But we're all agreeing to use our gifts. And here's, a, here's something else. We're all to agree, agreeing to you, let us be different and use them in different ways. Yeah. And so in our, in our nominations and things like that, we're choosing some different people to do leadership and to, and to do different things. Why? Because I want God's people to grow in their gift. Let God use you. I want God to use you where you are. I want you to get in your mind that you are the Lord's and you belong to Him and you'll go and do whatever He tells you. I don't, I don't want you to get in mind, though, that whatever you do for the Lord, that's all you're going to do. And that's all you're going to give your time to. And that's all you're going to give your resource to. Or if I get this position, I'll never move out of this position. Listen, don't be like that. Yeah. I want you to be open and say, Lord, any way you need to use me, I am yeah. available. Amen. Amen. A lot of us Amen. discover our gifts when we're just doing stuff that we're not even gifted to do. That's, what, sir, that's how serving happens. That's how, that's how giftedness comes about. You start doing things, you're just helping out. You're just being a blessing somewhere. And then you discover, I know that ain't my gift. And as soon as the Lord opens it up, I'm going to go for where my gift is. But until then, you just serve and let God. And you know what God will do while he's preparing you to walk into what he's called you to do? He teaches you things like humility. He teaches you things about how to serve people. He teaches you things about how to make sure you do what you do for the glory of God so he gets all the credit. He wants us to use our gifts in service. He expects the gifts to be used in different ministries. Amen. What are you passionate about, church? You individually, what are you passionate about? What is it that bothers you? Because that will help you discover what God is leading you towards. Back up, come at it from this angle. There's a cartoon that I, I used to watch, and uh, every now and then I just, uh, for nostalgia, go back and look at it. It's called Papa the Sailor Man. <laughs> Yeah. And Papa had this hot chick named Olive Oil. She was so bad, she could stop traffic. She had two grown men fighting over her. She was she was bad. She was those. Olive oil. And majority of the time, whatever was going on had to do with olive oil, the 
trouble, whatever trouble happened, especially when Pluto came in the picture, it was usually this trouble with Pluto and all of He trying to take Popeye's woman. And, 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 and things are happening, and things are happening, and, and things keep happening against Popeye, get knocked down, and get up, get knocked down, or, or, or whatever is happening. And then finally, he would make this one statement. He would say, this is all I can stand. I can't stand no more. <laughs> That's what he would say. And after that, he ever got his hands on his fingers. <laughs> we had a can of spinach when we were living in the trailer. We had a can of spinach and I just got through watching a Popeye cartoon. <laughs> and I opened that thing up and uh, I was like, this is... <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it was horrible. <laughs> he gives us a clue here. He says, this is all I can stand. I can't stand no more. Here's a clue to what God may be leading you to do in your stage of life. What is it that you just can't stand? Not that it irritates you and you talk about it, complain about it. No, what is it that you see that you it really bothers you, it really touches you, it really tugs on you, and then it's almost like you almost know what needs to be done. You could see yourself doing something about it. You could see yourself with your hand put, your footprint on it. You could see yourself making some kind of imprint there. You could see yourself making a difference. That is a clue can't stand no more. Mm. When you can sense that in your heart, I want you to be able to look out. Your gift is nigh. <laughs> your gift is around. God is calling you because what he begins, he begins to stir you. You begin to see things. You begin to see things that begin to bother you and it stirs your soul. And you say, I, I, it's about making money. The devil is a lie. It's deeper than that. It's about people. It's always about people. Your gift is always about people. It's always about people. It's, watch this. It's always about other people. <laughs> and when I'm telling you, when you're serving in ministry, you, you can't have that attitude. It's about me and me and me alone. And what can the church do for me lately? No, it's about you and I giving ourselves uh, to the Lord so that he can have his, have his way. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. All right. Here's my last point, and, and I'm done. Then Travis can bring in the slow music. Here's my last point. Number three. <laughs> Number three, God empowers these gifts in different activities. God empowers these gifts, number three, in different activities. He says in verse six, and there are varieties of activities, but in it, the same God who empowers them all in every one. God's got, so there are many different gifts in the body of Christ. And what God does, he uses those different gifts in different areas of life. Yes. In different areas of the world, in your job, different areas. God's your and watch it. Here's what is so phenomenal. And sometimes we don't even think about it. Did you know your job is a ministry? Yes. Did you know your children are ministry? Yes. Did you know your husband and your wife are y'all have a laying on of hands ministry? <laughs> but it's your ministry. At least <laughs> But it's your ministry. You and I, you, we have these ministries all around us. It, 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 I want you, I'm not belittling anyone, I don't want you to ever start thinking to yourself, God's not using me. Man, I want you to know everywhere you go, God has put you in a ministry. And I've always said this, that everywhere you go, everywhere you stand, there's an altar and a pulpit. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, everywhere you go, there's an altar, there's a pulpit. There's a pulpit for you to share your faith with somebody. Then there's an altar, you can grab their hands and lead them to the throne of grace right where you are. You, everywhere you go, are in a ministry. And here's what's powerful, that God gives you that power to work that ministry. God gives you that unction, that power that only he can give to, to do what needs to be done at the right time, in the right place and space. 
to minister to the right people at the right time, a kind word, just picking up the phone. Oh, if we could remember how powerful that is, just picking up the phone and say, hey, just thinking about you, you were on my mind, hanging up and going on about your business. You don't know how God uses that to be a blessing to somebody else. When you and I can see that God empowers these gifts in different situations, different activities, church, the church would be unstoppable. Yeah. Yeah, we would be making a real big, heavy dent. So I'm, I'm done. I'm coming in. I'll give you my two scriptures. So one, uh, I've heard many, there are two kinds of, really, uh, a lot of, two kinds of people right now in religious groups who are cessationist and um, continuationist. If I had to be categorized, I'm a continuationist. That simply means this, is that I believe in all of the gifts of the Spirit. I believe that God uses these gifts still. Uh, cessationists, they believe that uh, it's ceased. Oh, it's say, I'm not saying right, ceased, 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 whatever. They believe it's, it's stopped. God no, longer, God no longer needs these gifts. He no longer uses them, except maybe the gift of, of preaching. Here's my only problem with that. Have you seen the condition of the world? Yes. If the Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift, it, 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 every gift is good and is perfect and it comes from the Lord, why would I not want those gifts? One. Number two, have you seen the condition of the world? How could we say we don't need God's gifts? God wants to pour out his gifts so that he can reach as many people as he possibly can. So Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 says it's God who's working in you to both do his will and his good pleasure. God wants to empower you to do what he is calling us to do, to empower us to do these gifts because the world needs what is on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. Your neighbor needs what's Amen. inside of you. Yes. You cut hair. Brother Charles, yes, sir. those people who, whose hair you cut need what God's already given to you. They need it. You don't have to give them scripture verse. Just, man, God's been real good. He's been real merciful. God, children, I'm trying to tell everybody, people around you who you have created relationships with, the moment you let God use you, the moment you let him into your heart to use you, you can affect those people by his holy power. Amen. Amen. In 1 Corinthians verse 3, 7 through 9, Paul said this, and he was talking to a group of people, in the Corinthian church, in 1 Corinthians, they had all the spiritual gifts going on. They had, that was the hot, booming church at that day. The only problem was they had the gifts operating, but they did not know how to control themselves. And they would be a bit fleshly and saintly, and it just wasn't mixing well. So Paul had to write a letter to them to try to get them to see, you're very gifted. Praise the Lord. You've tapped into something but i got to get you to act right, too. Okay, you got to behave yourself with the gifts I'm giving you. He says, but understand this, whatever gift God has, he says God has given, you the, uh, given the power of it. And so what he tells them, he says, they started arguing about the preachers. And they said, one says, uh, we follow Apollos. One says, we follow Peter. Another one says, we follow Paul. And they started arguing about who they were going to follow. And Paul writes a letter and says, out of me, Paul, Apollos, and Peter, all of us are nothing. Mm -hmm. He says, because all we're doing is giving, planting the seed. He says, but God is the one who gives the increase. Amen. Amen. He says, God is just using us to tell you something, but God is the one himself yeah. who will make it grow. God is the one who will touch people's hearts. And right. that's why I want yeah. you to see that God, when you let God use you, God is the one who is behind you. Yeah. When you're planting the seed, he's the one behind you. You don't know what that person will be thinking about after you've said, hey, brother, I just want to tell you I love you with the love of the Lord. Yeah, you don't know what God, how God uses that to touch their heart and their mind and what direction that takes them down. You just don't know. God just wants us, listen, to know this. I want you to use the diversity of gifts that you have because I'm empowering those gifts. And if you could do that, man, I'm telling you, our church, God can do some amazing things in our church. Amen. I'm looking for God to do some amazing things in our church. Amen. I'm looking for God to send. Thank you for the 12 of you doing it. 
I'm looking for God to send. I'm looking for God to send you out to do His will. Amen. Yes. Okay. So I'm done. This, I'm going to read this one scripture to you. This is my illustration. I try to follow, close it with an illustration, but the scripture is the best illustration, and I'm done. Cue the, cue the nice music, Travis. This is how set it in the play. Here's my question that I'm asking God. Well, God, why do you need different kinds of gifts? Why not a one size fits all, right? Let's not make this complicated, God. It's getting complicated. People, some speak in tongues, some don't. Some believe in shouting, some don't. Some believe in quiet church, some believe in noisy church. God, why do you need different kinds of gifts? And you write this down. It's in Revelation chapter 7. I'm just going to read it. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. Revelation chapter 7 verse 9 he says this and after this I look and behold a great multitude that no one could number every nation from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing, glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be to all, be to our God forever and ever. Reverend, why does God need different kinds of gifts? God needs different kinds of gifts because one day God wants to stand before all the different kinds of people in the world. And it's going to take a variety of gifts to reach the variety of people that he has. Did you hear that? He said, all nations, all tribes, the Zulu tribe, you know, the other tribe, the all, all nationalities, all different kinds of languages, it's not just black people, it's just not white people, it's just not a certain sect of people. It is all those who put their faith in the Lord one day will be standing for the good and great God. Yes. 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 That throne. Yes. 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 So he says, here's what I need. I need my children to gather up as many people as they can. Let God use the gift he's put inside of you because God wants it. I like that. God don't discriminate. No, I don't. I just, I just read, anybody who got hate in their heart towards white people or black people, I just read to you that God does not discriminate. All nations, all tribes, all languages, God, there's no hate in heaven and there should be no hate in our hearts. Amen. There should be, there's no partiality in heaven and neither Amen. one of us should be partial. I only go to black people. Yeah. I only go to white people. I only go to Hispanic people. None of that stuff. Because that's not what's going to be standing before the living God. Amen. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. Now I want you to keep getting into your hearts as I'm preaching. God, use me for your glory. Yes. Use me. Use me in the way you see fit. God, and today I'm asking you to use me. Use me. I, I'm not trying to get rich or get famous. I just want you to use me. Lord, I'm surrendering, Lord. Just give me one open door, Lord. So make a way, Lord. Lord. And then, Lord, you have your way, God. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it, God. I want God to use me. And every time, listen, and seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And church, listen, all your needs are going to be taken care of. You may come in here today and you've got need after need. I want you to know God's going to meet those needs. He'll meet those needs. But as a child of God, you come on, let's take care of his business. Let's take care of his business today. Come on, let's lift our hands to the Lord this morning. God, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for this call that you put on our lives. I thank you, Lord, for this this powerful call you've given to every Christian believer in this church, God. Give myself a
special prayer.